sitting on the beach, sipping Mai Tais, working from your laptop. These are often the visions that are portrayed to us when it comes to doing freelance. But I think a lot of us realize now that that vision that is often shown to us isn't exactly the reality of freelance. I mean, come on, if you're sitting in the sun, good luck looking at your screen. But even with that being said, there are a lot of benefits to freelance, right? Like you can be your own boss, you can set your own hours, you can decide who you want to work with. And because of those benefits, those are the reasons why I decided to try going full steam ahead and to freelance UX design about uh, two months ago. But after chatting with a fellow YouTuber who I look up to, I realized that from our conversation, it may not be the, mess, the best move for me. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why I'm actually pivoting away towards UX design and what I'm deciding to do next. To give some background, I made the decision last year to transition from my job as a physical therapist and then transition into the UX design field. And so I've been working on that career transition since July, 2022. Well, the past few months, well actually three months ago, I was getting really fed up with the job search process. I had sent in over 500 applications and I probably got three interviews with three different companies that ultimately ended up going nowhere. So I was just getting really frustrated and defeated. And I had this inkling to always want to do freelance like in the back of my mind. So I figured, you know what? I'm just gonna go all in and say, screw the job search process. I'm just gonna go all in on freelance since that is what uh, I ultimately want to do anyway. And so that's what I decided to do. I figured out what I wanted to offer people as a freelancer. In my case, it was web design since that's something that I can do entirely on my own. And so from then on, I just started sending cold emails to people in my local community. And I would send anywhere from five to 10 cold emails a day. And I would follow up with them three or four times to try to get uh, any sort of interest with the service I was providing. And even with all of the cold emails and the follow-ups that I did, it really didn't go anywhere. Like I got a couple little nibbles of interest, but even those didn't really go anywhere. So that started to get a little bit discouraging as well. Around this time, I had the opportunity to chat with Mitsuko, who's a well-known YouTuber in the UX space. And he listened to my story about how I was shifting gears from job searching to going all in on freelance. And after he listened to my story, he gave me some advice that was really hard to hear, but after some reflection makes a lot of sense. He said that scrapping the job searching process may not be the best route for me, and I probably shouldn't be going all in on freelance right from the gate. He explains that because I'm in the relative infancy of my UX design career, I have very few real world experiences. And as a result of that, there's a lot of blind spots that I have. He goes on to say that when you have a UX design job, you encounter problems and come up with solutions that you would never even think to know about unless you're actually in those situations. There are things that aren't taught in boot camps. There are obstacles that you probably wouldn't encounter in a conceptual case study. And they aren't things that you could find a course for. They're only things that you could learn on the job. And so he says that if you hold a UX job, you learn a lot of skills that you wouldn't even think to want to learn about. And those things can make you a much more formidable freelancer. And he talks about his experience where he actually initially did freelance, but then he took on a full-time UX role and the skills that he gained from that full-time UX role made him a much better freelance UX designer later on down the road. So he basically said, you know, don't discount getting a UX job because the skills you gain from that are can be very transferable and can make you a much better freelance designer later on down the road. After our call, I'll be honest, I had a tough time swallowing this pill of information I just received. I mean, I had been sending cold emails left and right. I even made a video about how I was going all in 
on freelance. So I actually feel somewhat embarrassed making this video because I feel like I'm just being wishwashy about what I'm doing with this whole UX design career. And I feel like I'm just portraying myself as not having my shit together. But then again, I never said I had my shit together. And, you know, I'm trying to figure things out just as much as you are. I just happen to be broadcasting my <laughs> my lack of having things together. I will say, now that it's been a few weeks since my conversation with Mitsko, I'm kind of looking forward to the job application process again. Okay, let me scratch that. I'm not looking forward to the job application process. That part kind of sucks. But I'm looking forward to the opportunity to get <laughs> a UX job. I started thinking about the, while there are a lot of advantages to freelance work, there's also a lot of advantages to a UX job that I hadn't really thought about until now. The first thing is that freelance is lonely. And I'm not an extrovert and I'm not an introvert. I'm kind of like, somewhere in the middle. And with freelance, a lot of it is, unless I'm talking to a client, which is rare, it's pretty much just silent computer work all day. And not that there's something wrong with that, but I do inherently like interacting with others. And so with the context of a UX job, I would have the ability to interact with other, other people on my team. And especially with other experiences that I've been a part of with my UX bootcamp, it can be really cool to be on a team, especially one that you vibe with, because it just makes it more fun. And I get to learn from the people on my team and they can learn from me. And it's just a really cool way to just grow as a designer. And that's something that I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't have that opportunity if I just did freelance exclusively. The other thing is that freelance is just kind of limited in terms of scope. I have to think about what value I can provide as a solo designer. And so given my skill set, the main thing that entails is designing websites for people. And while that's a cool thing to do, it can be fun, it can also be kind of redundant. And when it comes to a UX job, there is the opportunity to be on a team where you're working on these very complex, involved projects where you're working with other designers, developers, other people on the product team, and you just have the capacity to work on products that have a much larger impact than just a website. And so that is definitely a benefit of a UX job is you can work on these more impactful projects that I just wouldn't be able to do as a solo designer. And of course, there's the usual difficulties of freelance like finding clients and the fact that it's an inconsistent income source. And so it's not to say that I don't want to do freelance. I still want to try that in the future. But I think for now, I'm going to follow the advice that was given to me and I'm going to put more focus on refining my portfolio and doing the job application process. And so I'll just see where that takes me. I talked earlier about how I valued the ability to interact with other designers. And if you value that as well, I have a Discord group called the Designers Den. And so if you'd like to interact with other designers and uh, just join a neat community of people, then feel free to join that. The link's in the, in the description below. Uh, with this job application process, it takes a lot of you know time management focus. And I actually made a video not too long ago about some of the productivity systems I use to stay focused with doing um, just difficult work. And so if you wanna check that out, that video is right here. And if you found this video to be helpful, be sure to hit the subscribe button. That would help me out a lot. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.